CSGO is a realistic game, but what if I told you that you can actually use magic to increase your chances of winning? No, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about something called a magic molotov. Normally, if you throw a molotov into the air, it will explode after two seconds. But with a few spellcasting tricks, you can make it fly forever. Okay, you got me. It's not really magic. It's a glitch that happens when a molotov hits the skybox texture. That's not the only weird quirk in CS, though. In this video, I'm going to go over my favorite of the little weird quirks within CS. Some intentional, some very unintentional, but regardless, they add a lot of personality to the game, and I love that. Also, thanks for a thousand subscribers, or I guess it's a bit more than that now, but whatever, I'm late. A great example of this is the numerous skill jumps in the game. Inferno has a lot of them. The one that I like to do is the jump from balcony onto RPK. The one that I'm unable to do, despite trying to learn it for a few hours like two years ago, is the one from on top of fountain to quad. On other maps, I mean, everyone knows about the jump from mid window to catwalk and the jump onto boxes to get into ladder room. This is probably the most tactically effective skill jump in the game, being a nearly essential movement tech for every above average player. One of my favorite jumps in the game is on cash, the jump from the garage door in mid onto the boost spot. This jump also has a lot of utility, being the fastest way to flank the A site. The movement within CS is really sick, and no other game's movement really feels even close to as polished as CS's does. However, even a movement engine that feels as fluid as the CS movement engine has some strange things in it. As you probably know, standing on the head of two or more people causes you to go all slippery. This makes sense as it prevents a lot of crazy boosts from being possible, however, if it's up against a wall it's still entirely possible to do boosts of three or even more people. You probably know of the four-man boost on Overpass, and there's also this weird boost on Nuke that lets you peer into heaven from T-Roof. And this one on Vertigo that used to see a lot more use but has fallen off in the past year or so. Speaking of boosts on Vertigo, there's this boost on Vertigo that was done by Furia against 100 Thieves in 2020. I mean, it worked pretty well, as this was the second to last game of Counter-Strike that 100 Thieves ever played. This is one of the craziest boosts I've ever seen, and it isn't even an exploit, it's still in the game today. Nobody does it though. <laughs> Since it's not a normal boost, it requires some weird movement shenanigans that I still don't really understand. With the middle player jumping to give upwards momentum to the third player so they can get onto this bar right here. It's actually unbelievable that this was done in a high-stakes professional match. Here he goes, the He's gonna have no idea. They Where's can't call the call? Whoa, Look at this! Oh my god, Yuri, that's perfect! This boost is nuts! Other underutilized wacky boost spots that I can think of off the top of my head are this boost onto a ramp and Vertigo, and the boost over the boxes on the B side of Mirage. You can do a weird solo boost on Mirage to get yourself to a similar position, but it requires some weird navigation of clip brushes, or I guess rather a navigation of the lack of clip brushes on these boxes. On the topic of B-Site Mirage, it plays host to another interesting movement technique, a skill jump commonly called the TENS jump, named after former CS semi-pro TENS. The TENS jump is, as he mentions in the video he made about it, really not all that tough, it just requires practice and an understanding of how the technique works. This technique is possible because the clip brush on the van just barely misses this corner of the model, allowing you to stand on it, and in the case of the TENS jump, bunny hop off of it. In 2015, a grand final was played between Fnatic and Cloud9 on Overpass. At one point during the map, a piece of utility nothing through was blocked by the train that runs through the map on a cycle. The train was off the cycle for this particular round, however, due to a tactical pause before the round, causing nothing to be thrown off and his Molotov to miss its target. This caused a bit of drama about how the train being somewhat random is not a competitive mechanic, and the train was eventually changed to only occur at a specific time on the in-game clock. Overpass is a weird map in general. It has gone through so much change throughout the years. The original version of Overpass is alien in comparison to the modern map. But Overpass is still a broken map. Literally. There's a gap in this part of Connector, and it bugs me every time I go down here. Or at least I always thought it was a gap until I inspected closer and realized that there was nothing there if you're right near it. I genuinely don't know what this is, and it has irritated me for the longest time. 
I think that this might be the sole reason for my animosity towards Overpass. Another weird pixel gap in CSGO that's been around forever is this corner on the ceiling of Mirage. I don't know why this hasn't been fixed by now, it's been known about since forever. At this point it's almost like a tourist attraction, it's just something that we all at least kind of know about. It's not a small gap either, in fact it's significant enough to be visible from all the way back at Truck without any scoped weapon. He's a friend. I love him because he is real, unlike the overpass gap. There's something that makes me feel very much at home in CS when I see a deliberate easter egg within a map. I love the deep intricacies and the love that goes into making a CS map, and believe me I could probably make an entire video about this, and I might. Small signs or graffitis being more detailed than you would ever assume playing on them normally, some sort of secret hidden thing out of bounds, just fun little things that mappers throw in, hoping that someday someone will find. The more dynamic, deliberate ones are the ones that I find myself loving the most. For example, the workplace casualties sign on Vertigo being affected whenever anyone throws themselves off the building. This is pretty sick. In fact, it doesn't change if you die in your own molly or even if you die from a normal fall, it only changes if you jump off the building. Most of the time this happens when someone tries to do this jump and fails horribly. On Nuke, you can press E on these vents to open and close them. It's a strange feature that I find most CS players don't know about, and if I start doing it while they're spectating me, they get a bit surprised. It's fun. On Office, if you shoot the vending machines, they uh, vent. That's pretty sick. I don't know what else to say about it, I, I just think it's cool that it does that. But in my eyes, the easter egg that takes the cake is the Inferno Monitor easter egg. In case you're unaware, there is a 1 in 83 chance each round that a monitor will show the CS 1.1 main menu screen. The reason that this easter egg is so cool to me is because I have never seen it naturally myself, although I know that it exists. Every time I'm in apartments, I make sure to take a look and see if the monitor's on, and it never is. It feels like every time I check, I'm hopelessly trying to find a cryptid, like Bigfoot or the Loch Ness Monster. The difference here is that I'm searching for something that I know exists, it's just somehow eluded me all these years. That weird passion for searching is kind of what CS is all about though, in a weird way. Constantly looking for that diamond in the rough. I'd say that a quarter of CS games are blowouts one way or another. Not fun for either side for the most part, just domination. Then from there, there's the around 65% of games where the losing team gets between 8 and 13 points. Close enough to be fun and interesting, but the better team still clearly coming out on top. Then there's that remaining 10% of games that go the full 30 rounds. That is what we seek, a game that goes the distance, where your impact can drastically change the outcome of the match. This weird monitor easter egg on Inferno is just another piece of the beautiful mosaic that is Counter-Strike as a game. There is no game that can pull as much emotion as those 10% games in CS. Just like I'll always be checking in apartments for that monitor, I'll always be playing Counter-Strike. If not for the little things, for the big things that come along with them. Thank you. Uh, this video is super sick to make and there's definitely room for me to make a sequel at some point with more cool small things that I like about CS. Thanks again for a thousand subscribers, although we are growing very, very fast, so it's a bit more than that. Again, I, I mentioned that earlier. Uh, anyways, if you like the video, please leave a like, and if you want more content like this, subscribe and turn on notifications. Thanks.